I will burn our house to the ground before I let that happen. Cersei Lannister, one of the most complex characters in A Song of Ice and Fire and Game of Thrones, is often considered evil due to her numerous wicked acts. Despite her many interactions with other characters, it is only in the fourth book, A Fist for Crows, that we gain real insight into Cersei's inner thoughts. Here we learn how she thinks and perceives others. Through these chapters, George R. R. Martin provides a snapshot of the mind of a dictator. We are the story given through Penpipe, and this is why Cersei Lannister is so evil. Cersei Lannister seizes power from her son Tommen and rules the Seven Kingdoms in a fist for crows, but she secured her villainous position long before that. Introduced in the first Game of Thrones books as the spiteful queen of King Robert, she frequently manipulates and betrays both allies and family members. Vengeful and cruel, she teaches Sansa the harsh realities of life and exploits her through lies and guilt. Cersei orders King Robert's death, supports Geoffrey's sadistic reign, and eliminates anyone who stands in her way. What drives a character as sinister as Cersei? Cersei's complex relationships, desires, and the challenges she faced throughout the series shaped her character as much as her background. Tywin Lannister, who instilled ambition and ruthlessness in Cersei, continuously belittled her. This upbringing significantly influenced Cersei's worldview, fueling her desire for respect and revenge. Determined to prove herself superior to her father and perhaps gain his validation, she clings to power and control, like any tyrant. She wants to make all the decisions, receive credit for them, and succeed on her own terms. However, Cersei's ambition for power is overshadowed by a deeper motivation. She is a deeply wounded individual who has suffered numerous disappointments. Her father promised her a Targaryen prince, but gave her a drunken Baratheon instead. She married an esteemed war hero only to find out he was a slow-witted oaf. She counted on Jaime as her lover, but found herself alone in her greatest hour of need. Realizing that no one could fulfill her desires, let alone her loveless marriage, Cersei inherited her father's belief that no one was as capable as she is. In her mind, the common folks are sheep, the small council is filled with flatter and ignorance, and those who wish to serve and love her are simply incompetent. In her own words, like any other dictator, when she looks around, all she sees are fools, enemies, and incompetence. Why enemies? Cersei feels betrayed by the men around her and threatened by the women beside her. Rhaegar Targaryen wed Lena Stark instead of wanting her. King Robert whispered Lena's name on their wedding night. Her son Tommen started to oppose her guidance because of Marjorie Tyrell. Her father sold her as a pawn to marry King Robert, who in turn fathered many bastards. Jaime failed to protect her children, and the small council was busy with their own schemes. Longing to protect herself, her reign, and her children, she used every cunning tactic and political maneuver at her disposal to ensure her dominion. Like any other tyrant, Cersei is highly paranoid, seeking to primitively strike against perceived threats, often with devastating consequences. If we take a step back and look at the bigger picture of female villains, Cersei is a prime example of how to write a compelling female villain. We will soon post a video about villainous characters, but for now, let us just say that there are two ways to make a sympathetic villain. The first is to turn them into the misunderstood heroes. This is how Maleficent turned into the fairy godmother, and the Snow Queen turned into the story of Anna and Elsa. The other way is to tell their story as the understood villain. This is how George R. R. Martin writes villains, by giving them believable motivations we can all relate to. As the story progresses, Cersei transforms into one of the most iconic antagonists in recent literature. We learn what she likes, what she detests, and what frightens her. These fears drive her, motivating her to commit horrible crimes against both those who stand in her way and those who stand by her side. It would have been interesting to find out more about her as the main villain, but her downfall was swift and harsh. However, with the winds of winter in the work, Cersei will return to cast her shadow. Make sure to subscribe and check out these videos for more.